Hey everybody, Kyle Goat here from GoatFilmReviews.com and the Goat Film Reviews YouTube channel. I'm coming at you right now with my movie haul for this month and actually last month. I had some issues with uh, getting my video uploaded last month, so I just combined the two and we're going to talk about everything that I picked up in August and September. I believe we're heading into horror season, we're heading into deal season, so uh, these videos might get longer as we go, but I'm going to try and protect my wallet. We'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and start off with... This right here, The Third Man. This is the Studio Canal collection of this film. Pretty nice presentation. It is the director's cut. I watched it after I got it for our show, Kyle and Nick on Film. No, I did not buy the Criterion Edition, which is selling for triple digits online. Uh, it has a funny story where like it was, it was released by Criterion and then the rights were immediately kind of like taken back very quickly afterwards. So production stopped very quickly and, and those copies are very rare to find. I was not going to drop that kind of money. This cost me 10 bucks, The Third Man. Um, never seen it before, but we were going to cover it, and I think renting it was pretty close to buying it. So We got the new Scream on 4K. For those of you guys that maybe follow me online, you might notice that I, I picked up a 4K TV and a 4K player in the last month. And it's fantastic. It's so great. I just, I like look forward to like the next movie I get to screen on there. And so this was one I... I saw it for pretty inexpensive and I was like you know what I really want to get this on 4k and check it out especially because the 4ks for the fifth screen film have been not in stores as much you got to order them online and I'm kind of more of a tangible pickout person so if I see it at a you know place I'm gonna go and buy it so scream five they should have put a five at the end I'm very excited for scream six let me know in the comments if you uh, are interested or if you're kind of done with that franchise we got right here body double on Blu-ray. This is an episode, uh, we're covering this film on Kyle and Nick on film for our Patreon. Um, and I hadn't seen the movie before, so I picked up a copy of Body Double. Um, I'm gonna keep my thoughts pretty slim for now because you gotta be a patron over there. So head over to Kyle and Nick on film and become a patron if you want to check that out. Uh, we also have, Stop or my mom will shoot. Uh, <laughs> this is one, uh, a, patri a patron selected this actually for Kyle and Nick on film this month. And I hadn't seen the movie. Uh, I saw it for pretty cheap online, so I picked up a copy of it. So our, that episode will be public. You'll be able to find a stop where my mom will shoot on our YouTube channel, Kyle and Nick on Film. The link's down in the description here, uh, and you can check that out. Um, I'll be honest with you. It's a bad movie, but I liked enough of it. Um, there's some, uh, uh, instead of BDE, this film has big Sophia energy uh, for you Estelle Getty fans. I'm a fan of the Golden Girls, so Estelle Getty, I think, was was flying high. I don't think Sylvester Stallone is, is the right person to be in this movie, so maybe your blame needs to be on Arnold Schwarzenegger for tricking him into being in the movie. But I liked it, even though, again, it's not a good movie. I didn't give it a high rating. But I was I watched it. I was entertained throughout it. It has eye-rolling, groan-worthy moments. But I also kind of expected that. It's one of those movies you can go back to now after hearing it so bad and be like, you know, it wasn't as bad as I expected. Uh, I recently picked this up, VHS 94. This was a Shutter exclusive. So this is the fourth film in the flagship VHS franchise. Fifth, if you count the spinoff Siren. This is VHS 94, which came out, I think it was last year. Yeah, last year. We actually have VHS 99 coming out um, very, very soon. Actually, let me just scooch a little bit closer here. Um, we actually have VHS 99 coming out on Shutter next month. So this copy right there, VHS 94 is the fourth film. And uh, a big uptick from VHS Viral, which I was not not too keen on. Um, my cat, Spikey. <laughs> Sorry, my cat's messing with the window. Um, I also picked this up. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of these seasons after 15, but there's a lot of seasons of this show. South Park, the complete season 24. Um, yeah, I haven't watched South Park since like season 14. It was their 200th episode, I remember. And I couldn't like stream the episode when it had dropped, and so I just kind of stopped watching it. Um, just kind of fell off the wagon of it. But I plan on getting back into it, and hopefully with season 24. There is a note to be on here. I, it says it on the front here, but I didn't realize that it meant it only contained two episodes. It says the season contains two extended length episodes, the pandemic special and South Park vaccination special. I assumed it had more than just the two, but those were also included. No, it's just those two specials. So this runs about an hour and a half, which is a little disappointing, but it actually wasn't that costly either. So pretty cheap. 
Um, another thing we're covering on, I think we have covered it now on Kyle and Nick on film, Jacob's Ladder. I picked this up early in the month um, so we could talk about it on the show. Um, I think this is Nick's favorite horror movie ever, he had said, or like one of his favorites ever. Um, and yeah, so I was really excited to check out um, Jacob's Ladder and, and see what that was all up to. Poltergeist 2 and Poltergeist 3. I actually picked this up a used copy of it back in August because I only had the first film and the remake. And actually, like, on rewatch, I rewatched Poltergeist 2 and 3 for um, my website, Kyle and Nick, or no, <laughs> goatfilmreviews.com. Go ahead and check out the website. Link's down in the description. Uh, I picked up Poltergeist 1 in the remake, but I was like, you know, I actually kind of dug 2 and 3 on rewatch. I remember not liking these movies when seeing them when I was younger, but also rewatching them I tended to appreciate the effects and the the kind of expansion of mythology no they're not as good as the original but they're way better than the remake so Poltergeist 2 and 3 not not too shabby for viewing experiences um, currently my favorite movie of the entire year everything everywhere all at once we have this on 4k as well this is actually I think the last 4k movie because it has the the blu-ray disc it's like the last 4k movie I bought before getting my TV and so we actually watched the blu-ray of it so now I want to go back and rewatch the 4K of it. But this is currently my favorite movie of the year. Um, and I think a rewatch actually solidified it. Because the first time I was like, I loved it, but did I did I really love it more than this or that and stuff? Uh, I watched it with my wife after getting it home, and, and we just enjoyed it even more. Because I think the second time through, you're not focused so much on figuring it out. Although it made more sense to me when I watched it the second time. Although we had taken edibles. So maybe that helped as well. Uh, this is actually something my wife bought because she really wanted it and she was tremendously disappointed and I'll explain why. Constantine the House of Mystery. So let me explain to this right here. So we I found out there was a Constantine movie coming out. I, I was like I told her about it. She was excited about it and she saw it in the store so she picked it up. What she did not pay attention to and what I did not pay attention to is that this is a D DC showcase animated short. And it comes with three other DC showcase animated shorts. Now we have a lot of the DC movies. So these other ones, uh, Kamandi, The Losers, and Blue Beetle, we already have. They came with other movies. So we spent like 20 bucks on Constantine, which runs, what? It says 76 minutes. It runs about 25 to 30. That's it. Now, I didn't spend that much on Batman Death in the Family, which was a 30 minute short, but, it, but I spent like less than half on that. And it had all these like other options. The Blu-ray you could actually like choose your own adventure through the story. That was pretty cool and pretty worth probably five, 10 bucks, which is why I spent. This was $20. It was, it was like 25 minutes. And the, the problem too is it didn't sell itself, at least to me personally, it didn't sell itself on the front cover or in any way that I was aware of as being a follow-up to Justice League Apocalypse War. Is that the name of it? Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, which is the last part of the DC animated universe which then got rebooted with Superman Man of Tomorrow so this is so like she expected to get a standalone Constantine film and it's really more of a standalone Constantine epilogue to a bunch of movies she didn't watch and I just wish like that that was given some explanation or anything like that because it, she kind of was like just lost the whole time unimpressed thought the I agree with her I think the the animation style wasn't very good just a disappointing movie like I look forward to, I, I plan on rewatching uh, the ones I have seen from that animated universe and I'll include this when I get to it um, and, and seeing all the ones I missed and stuff. And I'll maybe like it more in that context, but yeah, it was just frustrating. Cause it, I think at that point you almost need to call it like Justice League Dark Constantine or something like that so that we know it's like a follow up to that film. Cause again, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle. I was disappointed, shame on you Warner Brothers. All right, so now we have the three, uh, Barnes and Noble films that arrived at my house um, after the sale had ended. There was a half-off Criterion sale. You guys know I love those. So we'll cover the Blu-ray first. Uh, Ikiru by Akira Kurosawa. I've been picking up Kurosawa films one at a time every sale just to add to my collection and check out because Kurosawa is a person that I've I've really enjoyed. Uh, Rashomon, Yojimbo, Sanjuro. I love Kagamusha. And so I've been like slowly getting things like Throne of Blood and Ikiru and Seven Samurai and a bunch of these other films that I don't have yet. Ikiru is one that I've been very, very interested in because it just seems much, it seems very different from Kurosawa's other works. And I know it's actually being remade uh, into a film called Living, I think that's coming out this year. It's got some early Oscar buzz. So 
I'd like to check out the original before I see that remake. Um, and you know, doesn't hurt. And Criterion's also been doing 4K releases, so this is one of the ones that they released as well. I picked up two 4Ks, again, before I had a TV for it, but I just kind of wanted to future-proof and make sure I was ready. So this one right here is one of my favorite movies from Netflix, and that is Okja. Um, Bong Joon-ho, before he did Parasite, but after he did The Host, he did a Netflix movie called Okja, which is this weird kind of uh, treaties on, on meat production, on veganism, on all these elements, kind of a weird fantasy satire comedy action drama sad story it's it's Bong Joon-ho he's just like combining all these like elements that shouldn't really fit together but he does and they work pretty well together um Jake Gyllenhaal Tilda Swinton Stephen Young Paul Dano are all awesome I think I think the standout is Gyllenhaal just because he's playing like such a insane kind of a character but Okja is really good if you have Netflix stream the movie first and then consider getting that 4k copy from Criterion there's a lot of uh some pretty cool extra stuff on here, conversations, interviews, um, like short film work that kind of covers the production diaries. And like I said, Netflix doesn't release their stuff on home video very often. And as we've seen on HBO Max, this stuff can disappear. It can be gone. Uh, just because it says it's an original does not mean it will be forever. So I'm gonna nab some of these if I think there's an opportunity to get a home video because those rights can get picked up pretty quick. Last but not least is uh, the 4K of The Red Shoes. I've not seen this movie. I've never seen any Powell and Pressburger films. This is one of the ones that I consistently see Martin Scorsese yammering on about. I love Martin Scorsese. I'm, not, I'm just picking on him a little bit. Um, he's constantly talking about how great The Red Shoes is. And so I was like, I really want to get this one and add it to my collection. And then my closest friend bought the 4K for his television and was like, dude, dude, watch it. And I, I, I trust his judgment. Yeah, this looks like a fantastic movie and honestly, I blow a lot of money on on stupid movies. I should buy it, blow some money on, on good ones and, and check this one out. So The Red Shoes is now in my collection. All right, folks, that's it for this month and last month, I guess. Let me know down below what you thought about any of the films that uh, I picked up during this last sale. Uh, and, uh, you know, which ones do you think are worth watching and which ones do you think are worth skipping? Leave me a comment down below with your thoughts. Uh, here's Goku right here. He just wanted to say hi, everybody. So... Thank you guys for joining me. We'll see you for our movie haul, hopefully in October, at least by November. See you later.